linguistic landscape is the visibility and the salience of languages on public and commercial sites in a given territory or region. A linguistic landscape is divided into four discourse, regulatory discourse, infrastructure discourse, commercial discourse, and transgressive discourse. This video will focus on commercial discourse in Sydney Chinatown. In this video, we will show linguistic landscape as a tool to indicate the composition of Sydney Chinatown. Through linguistic landscape, Chinatown is not only a space with Chinese culture, but also blends with other cultures, Australia, Korea, and Japan. We can see lots of Chinese characters on commercial sites. The linguistic landscape points out the languages which have the highest stature with a space. In a bilingual environment, the language appears most frequently are seen as having a higher value. Therefore, Chinese is the language with higher value in Chinatown. The test on linguistic landscape directs toward readers. Spoke Sky's definition of the linguistic landscape highlights the participants that both construct and interpret a sign. So the sign should be seen as the result of a process with several participants. That is, the owner of the sign and the reader. When looking at the commercial sign in Chinatown, then these factors should be taken into account. On this commercial side, the owner uses both Chinese and English to indicate that this is a restaurant. Therefore, linguistic landscape shows the communication between store owner and the visitors. This trading hour side is a simple homemade computer printed piece of A4 paper. While homemade tests may reflect a lower level of stability or point towards an emergent, inchoate form of organization. Besides the bilingual commercial size, we could also find size with Chinese only, and these size often exist in Chinese gift shops, where you can send gifts back to China, and the migration and education service which helps Chinese to get visas and migrate to Australia. Sydney Chinatown also has lots of English-only commercial sites. It's an Australian local skincare brand, and we find this reverse store in Chinatown. In the booklet, all the information of the products is translated into Chinese to attract Chinese customers. This is a Japanese restaurant, but the menu is written in English and Chinese. The fact that an Australian company and a Japanese restaurant make use of the Chinese in order to attract Chinese customers could be potentially signal that they are a community who would be valued with Sydney Chinatown. Therefore, it could be argued this linguistic landscape provides opportunity for Australian and Japanese companies to move quite com comfortably into Chinatown. This blackboard only has English on it. It uses different colors, font styles, and hand drawings to attract customers. And it is an example of non-official size. Non-official sites refer to private-owned shops and advertisements. Official sites are used by governments to set different rules. Beckhans suggests that the greater linguistic diversity found on non-official sites is due to many of the languages with a linguistic landscape not being recognized in an official capacity. Therefore, this bar advertisement, a non-official site, 
use wider variety of resources. This is a sticker photo booth. The poster is colorful and includes a heart-shaped figure. This poster uses katakana, which is Japanese characters to write words ordinarily written in kanji or hiragana. The use of katakana provides an informal expression and presents the photo booth as more a symbol to customers. The linguistic landscape isn't all about writing system. Both of color, front style, and the design can affect the message. This is a Korean only commercial site. This site doesn't have any English or Chinese translation, so it may attract Korean customers. Or the owner would like to maintain exotic charm. <laughs>